Five Nights at Freddy's. Either you love it or you hate it. Today, I'm gonna to be going through all of the games and ranking them on a tier list to show you whether I like them or I hate them. Also, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm sorry if I sound kind of weird while recording this. I don't know when you're watching this video, there might be five billion more Five Nights at Freddy's games, but we're going to be going all the way up until Into the Pit, which hasn't yet released, but we know it exists. Anyways, I'm excited to start ranking these games, so uh, let's get to ranking. I got all of the games in order here from 1 to Into the Pit. Five Nights at Freddy's 1? Listen, it's a classic. It can get a little bit repetitive here and there, but I mean, what what Five Nights at Freddy's game can? They're all they're all the same spiel, I guess, except for the VR ones and Security Breach. But I mean, this was the game that kickstarted everything, man. I remember looking through those those missing kids posters, the news article clippings, the everything. God, that was those were the good old times, let me tell you. I mean, it has its flaws. Every game does. But there's, there's something about this game that is so comforting and so fun. I love the designs. I love the aesthetics. I can never get Markiplier's intro out of my head. I have that ingrained into my skull. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and welcome, welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm going to have to put this one in S tier for this. I think, I think everyone can agree with this. This is where it's about to get a little bit controversial. Five Nights at Freddy's 2, I know a lot of people love this game, and I know a lot of people hate it. I mean, there's good and bad things about it. It has really cool withered designs. It brings the mini games into the game, which are a really cool way to show the lore. It had so much more content than the first game, and I'd say the third game as well. It just had so much going on. It had phenomenal sound design. A lot of really funny moments came out of it, and this is where MatPat came onto the scene and really made his breakthrough with uh, Five Nights at Freddy's and started getting really into it. But it also is really rough to, to say I really like this game. The puppet mechanic, while kind of interesting, also kind of sucks. It's really annoying. There's a lot of annoying characters in here like Balloon Boy, the puppet, whatever the hell this guy's supposed to be. All in all, it's it's okay. It, it definitely has its problems. It has its benefits as well. But at the end of the day, I didn't like it myself, okay? I'm gonna have to put this, I, I actually really didn't like this one. It is the only one of these games on this entire list other than Five Minutes at Freddy's 4 and Help Wanted 2 that I have not completed. And Help Wanted 2 is only because my VR, I just can't do VR, it hurts my head. So, honestly, I'm gonna have to put this one in D tier. I'm really not a fan, I know, I know, I'm sorry. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments down below. Give me your reasoning, you might change my mind, but I kinda doubt it. Alright, two controversial ones back to back, Five Nights at Freddy's 3. A lot of people really like this one, a lot of people really do not like it. And I'm gonna go with the unpopular opinion again. I actually do like this game. I know that the jump scares were kind of lackluster, but from a lore perspective, oh my god, it was so interesting. As well as the set design, oh my god, it looked beautiful. The look, like, the entire area was really well done. Springtrap, amazing design of a character. Actual perfection. I don't think it got better from there. They, they peaked with Springtrap. The Phantoms were, they were underutilized. I think it could have been definitely better. But it was such a cool concept, and they really did do a solid job. Not that he did a very good job, it was just Scott Cawthon, there was no other people on the team. But the mini games were very secret to get, they were a little bit difficult. I don't think it would be an S tier, but I think it would be... Uh, I suppose A tier. I'm gonna say A tier because it was very early on. This is... This was around the time when I was just like, all of my focus was on Five Nights at Freddy's. I, it was my biggest interest, this was the time I was most interested in it. I'm still interested now, but it's not as much. There's some childlike wonder I have associated with this third game between watching Markiplier play it, watching Daco play it, listening to the game theory videos on it. It's, it's, it just sits with me very, very well. Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I think this one's pretty unanimous. I don't know anyone who doesn't like the game. Um, it was really, really scary and difficult for me. The, the reason I wasn't able to beat it is actually because I was too scared to beat it. I know. That is kind of embarrassing, kind of funny, but I was genuinely too terrified to actually beat this game and go all the way through with it. Which says something about the quality of it. I'm I'm debating putting this in S tier or A tier. I feel like I don't want too many things in S tier, so I'm going to put this in A tier, but it's going to be high A tier because this is this was phenomenal. This was such a good game, okay? Played it on stream before, uh, and I peed myself in fear. Not actually, but I wouldn't be surprised if that actually did happen to me. In the future. All in all, really good game. Love it. I think it deserves to be here. Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. Okay, this one is kind of difficult. It was really good. I really like the different approach to it. 
where it was a lot more narrative. It was a it was a story rather than a game. It felt like a visual novel almost. It was like a, it was like a precursor to a visual novel where it's still kind of a game, but still kind of a visual novel. At least I think I don't know. I don't really play visual novels, but it was really cool. The designs, once again, phenomenal from a lore perspective. Really interesting. It gave a lot of insight. I really like Sister Location. I'm a fan. I do think it falls flat in some areas, but oh, just thinking about like the, the custom night, watching Markiplier play the Sister Location custom night was really funny. Oh, whoa, where are you, 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 you? <laughs> All right, well, I got caught with my <laughs> out. Playing it myself on stream was so fun. That was awesome. I think I revisited it and played it like four times between different <laughs> streams. It was so good. The mini arena section, God, God, the mini arena section, don't remind me. It's, it was awful. That was the biggest down point of the game was when you had to fend off the mini arenas for like 10 minutes. That was awful. And they had to nerf it, but oh, it was so good. First game with voice acting brought in the amazing voice actor, Kellen Goff as, as Funtime Freddy. It was, it was really good. I like it. Oh, does it belong in S tier is the question. I don't know if it belongs in S tier. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in A tier, but I'm going to put the thing is, it's not better than five nights at Freddy's three. It's about the same level as five nights at Freddy's four. So I'm going to put an F three actually down to B tier. I know, I know, but I think, I think B tier is a pretty solid place for this. And I think a tier is a good place for this. I think that just is, I think that makes sense. I think that's fair. Pizzeria simulator. Oh, I love this game. I have revisited this game over five times across my Twitch and my YouTube channel. God, this was so good. I absolutely, dude, I don't even know what to say about it. It's so fun. It has so many different endings. There's so many different ways to play the game. In all of these games, there's really one way you can play the game. In this one, it's really your own game. You can do so many different things when you're making your pizzeria. I, I wish there was an extended version of this where you could actually make like a big pizzeria, you know, made in like Unity or like Unreal Engine. God, that'd be so cool. The animatronic designs, the, I didn't really like the scrapped ones. I'm going to be honest. They were not my favorite designs. They were good. They weren't great. Scrap Trap was, ugh, ugh. Don't get me started on Scrap Trap, dude. He was, he was ugly. I did not like him, but Lefty was cool. I really liked Lefty. My friend Piano actually has his cat named after Lefty. There was a lot of lore. It really was a really phenomenal way to end off the series. To just be like, this is Five Nights at Freddy's. This is where it ends. This is the end of the Aftons. This is where we move on to Vanessa's story. Uh, which I don't think that was planned. It was, it, this really was like, this is the end of Five Nights at Freddy's. I know a lot of people wish it ended here. I can see that. I wouldn't say I wish it ended here, but this really was the pinnacle, I feel. This is really where everything wrapped up, and this is where all the interest was at the time. And once again, the mini games again, oh my god, so cool. Playing the, the candy maze thing, or the fruit maze, and seeing spring traps slowly appear behind you. Oh, that was so cool. The Midnight Motorist, having all those secrets in Midnight Motorist where people are trying to figure it out. That was so fun. So interesting. So cool. It was, that was really well done. I'm going to have to put this one in S tier, honestly. It's, it's hard. I don't want to put so many things in S tier, but it really belongs here. I need to be more mean to these games is what I'm seeing. I need to be more hateful, but it honestly is a really good game. It, it really is. Despite its flaws, it's so fun. The night sections are a little bit rough, actually, now that I think about it. But I think it deserves to stay at the lower end of S. I think that's a good spot. I just realized I forgot to add some <laughs> games here. So I'll do that real quick. One second, guys. All right, there we go. I added the other two. It's it's FNAF World and Ultimate Custom Night. Let's do these real quick. Ultimate Custom Night. Interesting. It's kind of repetitive. William Afton's Purgatory, I think, is what we all agreed that this is. Nothing special about it. It's sort of just all the Five Nights at Freddy's games. It's not good. It's not bad. It just sort of is there. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I'm just going to put it there. I kind of want to speed run through these two I missed because I want to get back to Help Wanted, one of my favorite FNAF games. But honestly, FNAF World ugh, is kind of difficult. It was weird from a storytelling perspective. I can't tell if it was meant to be canon or not, if it was just for fun or the lore implications of this. 
I know MatPat said something about it being a brain. I don't know. But it's really, I, I like this game. I actually, I, I like it. I like it. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Um, I like the adventure aspect, the collecting characters, the, the sound effects, the visuals. It's very all over the place, but there's something nice about it. It's fun. Good rainy day game, definitely. It was fun seeing new versions of all the animatronics as these cute little characters. It's, it's definitely good. I like this one. It's definitely not S tier, to clarify. I do like it. Actually, fun fact, FNAF World broke my first ever computer. I had a Mac, and I didn't know that FNAF World was free. I thought all the games costed money, because they did on my phone. Um, and I didn't know that they didn't support Mac OS. So I looked up FNAF World Download Free Mac into my Safari, and I downloaded the first thing that came up, and believe it or not, it actually was FNAF World. It, I could play it, and I was playing it. I, but the entire time I had it, I could not use the internet for some reason. And I was like, whoa, this is so weird. I wonder why this is. And then one day, my computer just didn't turn on. And I think it was entirely because of that thing I downloaded. I'm definitely going to put this one in, I want to say, B tier. Because it has its issues, but it's, it is really good. It is fun. It's interesting. It was fun watching all the YouTubers play it and try to make lore of it, even though there was not much lore to be had. Help Wanted. This was the first Five Nights at Freddy's game I did a series on. This is the first game I did a series on, actually. Wait. If you go to my channel, actually. Go to your videos. Oldest. I have some, like, single, like, one-offs here. But it was my, my 10th video. That is actually really cool. 10th video was Help Wanted. Help Wanted 1. This was, oh, this was amazing. God, I remember doing this. It was lovely. And then I did this whole series. Two, three, four, five. God, this was long. That's crazy. That's crazy. Seven whole parts. Plus Curse of Dreadbear. It's weird looking back at all of this. Yeah, the next series I did was uh, Fazbear Nights. Fazbear Nights. Oh, I remember that. That was a good game. Honestly, I have so many good memories of this. Five Nights at Freddy's was really it was made to be a vr game like it is perfect as that there were so many cool lore tidbits glitch trap oh my god glitch trap was so freaking cool there was nothing there was no fear bigger than when i saw glitch trap for the first time in that little hallway thing anyways i i love that i might actually revisit it a second time just because it would be so fun to do i'm gonna put this one in s tier Love it to death all around. Love this one. I, I, I cannot bear myself to bring this any lower than like S tier. Curse of Dreadbear. I actually haven't done much with the Curse of Dreadbear. I, I honestly don't remember much other than the Dreadbear game where you're the Frank and Freddy one where you're trying to put the brain in him. I, uh, I only remember that one. I know I did the mangle in the hallway one. I didn't turn it into a video. Honestly, it... It was good. It wasn't as good as the main game, though. I, if I'm going to be honest, it was not as good as the main game. It's good. Like, I'm not saying it's not good, but it wasn't as good. It's not S tier, you know? I don't know how many people share that sentiment, honestly. Um, It was cool. It was all Halloween themed. I'm going to have to go with B tier, honestly. I'm going to have to go with B tier. It, it was good. Not great. I think that's a fair assessment of it. If you disagree with any of these, once again, let me know in the comments down below with your thoughts. Also, I will have this tier list in the description down below if you want to do this exact same tier list. I'd love to see what you guys think. Go ahead, you know, throw it into the Discord server so I can see your rankings because I'm really curious to see how you guys rank these. See how similar we are, how different we are, all that stuff. FNAF AR. I, I don't know how many people enjoyed this. I did not. It was so unfun. There were microtransactions. It got shut down. It's not even alive anymore. They shut it down, removed it from the app stores. It was okay. They gave voice lines to some of the, some of the characters, not all of them, to some of them. The designs, I guess, were solid, but honestly, I wasn't a FNAF AR fan. I'm gonna put this one in F tier. Just, you know, I need to fill it out. I probably would put it in D tier, but I need to fill out this entire row. I think this is a fair assessment. It was not good. Um, there's a reason they shut it down. They were making enough money because not enough people were playing it because it was not good enough. Security breach. It was actually really good. It had its flaws. It was very glitchy. So unbelievably glitchy. So laggy. So, so resource intensive. 
I could barely stream it when it came out. Despite that, I really liked it. The designs were really cool. The, the location was really cool. It wasn't as scary, which I'm a little bit disappointed about. I wish it went a little bit more for the horror approach. I mean, other than the endos, the in, in the in the daycare, those are like the only seriously scary parts. Still, I really liked it. It really paved the way for Ruin, Help Wanted 2. Uh, I wish that they were able to finish their game. I was listening to FNAF's interview. Apparently, like, what is it? They didn't even have 20 people working on the game. I think it was 11 people were working on the game, which is like not a lot. So for the people they had, the time they had, phenomenal. I wish it was like 50 people working on this game for like three years. Then it would have been perfect. It would have been phenomenal, amazing. But unfortunately, that's not the reality of the situation. If they really finished it, it would have been an S tier, but they didn't. I'm going to put A tier because I still really liked it. It was it was wonderful. It's what reinvigorated my my appreciation for the game and made me a FNAF tuber. I think A tier is safe. I think that's fair. Ruin. This basically just fixed all of the problems with Security Breach, or at least a lot of them. Um, it was very resource intensive, um, but it was really good. Mexus was such a cool villain. There were so many cool Easter eggs with it. The lore I brought in was a phenomenal. Oh, and oh my god, the mimic. The mimic was really cool. I don't really like the mimic's design. Plot twists, I could smell the plot twist a mile away. But despite that, I had a lot of fun with it. It was free. I remember it was, I streamed it with my friend Rabbit and it was, we were, it was the highest viewed stream I ever had. We were at 300 viewers, over 300 viewers for it. Just for the game to not come out. I thought it came out early uh, because there was a huge update to FNAF Security Breach. It was like 40 gigabyte update. But it's, I'm gonna put an S tier. I, like, I don't have any bad memories of Ruin, if I'm going to be honest. I don't have any, other than maybe the lagginess. It was really good all around. Help Wanted 2, I really liked Help Wanted 2, a lot of it. I didn't like all of it. I freaking hated the cooking and the carny levels, Um, which you can see if you saw my Help Wanted 2 Let's Play series. That was rough, but it. I really liked parts of it. I really, really loved the Belord's Gallery one. That was so fun, so scary. Um, I think it definitely, oh, and the Helpy one. Oh God, there were so many funny moments that I turned into shorts with the Helpy franchise or the Helpy section. I don't have many complaints about it other than the the Carney levels. Those ones were rough. Honestly, it's it's it was phenomenal. I really like it. It was really good. Uh, when I streamed it though, it broke my PC for a while. Um, it took like a day to fix because it was so resource intensive. Um, I had to get like a new graphics card and everything just to play it. It's it's not S tier. It's not as good as Help Wanted 1, if I'm going to be honest. Um, that might just be me. Let me know if you disagree with that, because it's completely fair. I still really like this. It was better than Dreadbear. I want to put it at the front of A tier, just barely below S tier, because it's not at the same level as Ruin or Help Wanted or FNAF 6 or the first game, but it's still really good but it's just not quite there for me personally. Finally, Into the Pit. This game has not come out yet, but I did do a reaction video. Make sure to check that one out. I can't rank this because I don't know <laughs> anything about it uh, other than the trailer we got. So I'll just uh, I'll just make this pink and we can uh, question mark. <laughs> and then I think that, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think that is a fair assessment of all these games. I really, I was really nice with a lot of these games. It's, they're like all towards the top. It is very top heavy. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below with your own rankings and make sure to go rank it yourself using the link in the description down below if you want to. Of course, you don't have to, but I'd love to see it. Send it in my Discord, at me on Twitter with it. This was really fun. This is a lot different from my usual content, but if you enjoyed and you want to see me do more stuff like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss a video. It would be greatly appreciated. Special thank you to our members, and there's about to be two videos on screen, so make sure you click one of those because it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you again so much for watching until the end of the video. That means a ton. Kiss, kiss. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.